last year, September time, I noticed a mark on my face, on my upper lip. And I went to my followers online and I just ran and I said, has anybody ever had a spot that never disappeared? And my phone literally blew up and from that moment I was like, I knew like there was that gut feeling thought of this is something more serious than what I expected it ever ever to be. And when I went back on my photos and videos, it was there for around about two years. But I never really passed any remarks until it started to crust and bleed and get really, really itchy. So the first thing I done was contact my GP. My GP wasn't overly worried about it at the first sight. So I had to send a photo and they weren't really worried. But I sort of pushed it like, no, this isn't normal. Like it is on my face too long and it's just behaving really unusual. And... Anyway, got a very long story short, I ended up, I decided to go private because the waiting list was, I think she said around two years and mentally, like within that 24 hour period, like my thoughts was, like I can't even ex put it into words how I was feeling, like I had myself dead and buried, like thinking the worst, googling the worst and whatever, but um, I decided to go private for a consultation got a cancellation the following Monday and it was then that it was verbally diagnosed as basal cell carcinoma, a form of skin cancer. And from that minute, it was just like my world was crumbling. And people tell you not to Google, but we're only human and we're going to do those things. But the first thing that came into my head was... Death. Because whenever you hear that, that word cancer, it's just... No matter if it's serious or if it's not so serious, the first thing as a human being we think about is death. And like, I, I'm not just thinking of me. I have three children and a husband and a family. And I have so many people that depend on me. And I just thought like, is this, is this the way it's gonna go for me now? And because I wasn't educated on, on my diagnosis, I thought, the absolute worst. I felt like there was no proper reassurance from the verbal diagnosis. But anyway, um, I think it was maybe about a couple of weeks later, I went for my biopsy, got a biopsy, and it was around 16 weeks I had to wait for my actual medical diagnosis, as they call it. Um, and I can't even put into words what I went through for those 16 weeks. Like anybody that knows me or looks into my life would have thought I had it all. Like I had a very successful business. And when I say I had, I did have, I don't have now because I had to give everything up for I had to give everything up because it was either that, working constantly and stressing and worrying about things I didn't need to worry about or my health and my family. And for 10 years, I put my work first before them. And now sitting here saying that and looking at it in this side of it, I was selfish for always putting my work and my business and my career first. And I'm not saying that in a way that people shouldn't do that. Yes, we all need we all need the things that keep us going in life and things like that. But 
even throughout like having children I was back to work straight away and um, so I had to, I spoke to my husband and we had to make the decision that we had to just walk away whenever we could so he's went back to work we're living a normal kind of life now and my health has to come first even though I know it's not terminal like I know that now it's not terminal but whenever you're waiting for a diagnosis like yes you're verbally diagnosed with something but it also could be something more serious whenever you're waiting for the lab results you know and it's it's beyond the diagnosis it's the side that people don't say it's a side that people don't share or feel maybe embarrassed to share you know it's like you're re you're struggling with a physical illness as well as a mental illness like that's not okay do you know what I mean and I feel like I feel in a way I understand the NHS is on their knees and I respect everybody that does their absolute best for us but I feel like our government needs to stand up and do something better like they need to do something for the NHS and for us as human beings in this country, you know. Like we can't just be left to deal with something that is serious. And no matter, like in Ireland, skin cancer is the most common cancer and people don't even know that. And that's a really, really sad thing. Like people don't even understand that it's because of how we are educated as children, even as adults, yes, but the main point of my message that I want to get out there is we need to do better as a society to educate our children about the UVA and the UVB rays. Like, I never knew any of this until, unfortunately, I got my diagnosis, but, and it's just, it's a sad thing, but... I do feel the people in bar need to stand up and need to do something more for us.